morning and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Kyle. I'm Kyle Klopaki, the executive producer and CEO for the Arizona Broadway Theater. And today we're standing outside the theater on this gorgeous spring day. And uh, I, our guest today is Mr. David Pearson. Dave Pearson is our director of building operations here at the theater. And I'd like to welcome you to this episode. Dave, good How morning. Yeah, good morning. Ready okay. to enjoy a cup of coffee. Absolutely, on this great, great day. Well, Dave is um, the head of our building operations, and one of the many things that he's in charge of is how patrons come and go throughout the facility and managing it during some of these COVID restrictions. And so, Dave, why don't you explain a little bit about what we have going on now and why there's a bunch of tables and chairs behind you? I'd be happy to. First, I'd just like to say thanks for all of you that have been patient with us and, and all of our procedures and masks and all of this sort of thing. You've been wonderful. We appreciate the support. And that's for our own staff and team, as well as those in the public at large and our incredible patrons and customers. So behind us, this is one of the things that was positive that's come out of the, the whole COVID challenge. Uh, we were able to uh, be able to, to do dining and serve alcohol out here on the patio and enjoy the beautiful Arizona weather before it heats up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so right now we have seating out here. Uh, it's available as people desire to come out and have a nice cocktail or sit down and have a, a plate of dinner. Nice lunch. Uh, and we've enjoyed it as much as our customers have enjoyed it, our, our patrons. Yeah, but one of the big things that, that you've done here since, I mean, you've been with us now for six years, probably? Yeah, late 2015, I yeah. came on board. Yeah, and you and I met back uh, several years ago. You were involved in a bunch of community economic development things, and uh, we got to become good friends right away, and knowing that we needed somebody with your expertise in development to help lead some of the next generation of theater, and that led to a great expansion that we did a couple years ago. What is that? Well, the Encore Room. Um, I got excited about it, Kyle and Cassandra had a dream uh, to expand this building before it really had a CO to begin with. And right. so there was a thousand square feet of space that was really our multi-purpose space. And the more I got to know the theater operation, got to know the family, got to know what was going on here, knew the needs of the community, the community development challenges uh, for space in, in this West Valley in particular here at P83. Uh, Kyle's dream to expand the Encore Room was a project that I was very much interested in. And so, came on board late 2015, and we began to secure the financing for that and work on drawings and permits and finalizing things. And we broke ground and we got a CL in 2017. So, it was. Well, let's a, go walk toward our secret back or front door over here to the Encore Room. And uh, so normally our patrons come through the lobby, but here we have this little spe special secret speakeasy door into the side over here, uh, which was part of the construction. You can see this is the outside of the new building, right? It is the outside. It starts here and goes all the way to the curb. Um, about 6,000 plus square feet now. Um, to mezzanine, wonderful seating for about 200 people. And frankly, we have used it extensively with our smaller scale shows as we've come back uh, out of the COVID shutdown. So this has been an important space for us. And so for those of you who've been to Walk in the Line, which was our first real production back uh, in January, it opened on January 29th. For those of you who saw that show, that was in the Encore Room. For those of you who didn't see it, uh, you'll get a chance to see it. We're gonna do our next production of Nonsense. Uh, that will also be in our Encore Room, which is a fantastic little space. So why don't we head on in there and you can take a look at it. So here we are in the Encore Room, which uh, David illustrated is about a 6,000 square foot facility. There's two floors to it. We have a horseshoe balcony above us, as well as this main floor. And it's all on one level, which works very well for us to use it as a multi-purpose space. Uh, so um, Dave, tell us a little bit about why we decided to make it a banquet space rather than just a legitimate theater. Sure. Well, the need for this type of flex space that we now enjoy for the city of Peoria, there just aren't that many good conference facilities, hardly any actually, uh, without hotel rooms and those types of things. And they're even very limited. So to, for us to be able to build this space had a multiplicity of, of value to it, not only to the theater, to allow Kyle to change programming and sort of work, if you would, with his banquet operation and expand it, which is an important part of our business. It allows us to, we have youth programs and children programs and camps that use this space. We have a number of educational pieces 
uh, for adults as well. So that that's one aspect of it. So that was important to me on the education side. But even more than that, from a business development side, uh, the West Valley needs these types of environments. So we we have everything from um, life planning uh, groups, if you will, that come in from Sun City, all up and down the 101 corridor, if you will, now out to the 303, as well as uh, memorial services, weddings, you name it, anything that would have a need for space. Um, we are a top choice now. We toggle back and forth a little bit between when we do banquets and when we try to do public performances and <laughs> yeah. activities in here. Uh, one thing that had been sort of a staple of the, the use of the room was our high rev program, which of course we do on our, our Monday nights. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, our high rev program is a program for uh, teens uh, to come in here. We've had 60 kids. Um, throughout the evening on Monday nights, and this room just comes alive with this explosive energy of these kids. And they have a great and, time. Yeah, they have a wonderful time. And we're going to be bringing that program back this fall. Uh, for those uh, that are interested in it, we'll have more information on our website. Um, but we're hoping to get our youth program back up and alive here because that energy is just absolutely you know, something we'd love to bottle and keep um, into the walls of this facility. So that's all been working really well. So the other thing I mentioned is that we do have Nonsense coming up here and it will be in this room, which is gonna be a wonderful uh, scaled down production. For those of you who know the show Nonsense, um, it takes place in a gymnasium um, of, a, of a high school, which this kind of room looks like one, especially once I hang a basketball hoop on the wall here. It'll look very much like a gymnasium. So we think the immersive idea of the show in here will work very well. One thing of note is that when you are in our performance spaces, uh, we don't allow food and beverage. So all of our dining is done in our lobby, which is just behind us over here. So we're gonna head over there right now and kind of talk about what the safety protocols are and what to expect when you're coming to the theater. So here we are in the lobby of the Arizona Broadway Theater. Dave, why don't you tell us a little bit more about our safety protocols and why we've instituted the rules that we have. Be happy to. So again, as Kyle said, we are we have the lobby set up as dining space. So just in quick background, we, we are a little bit um, complex in the fact that we operate as a theater, we operate as a restaurant, and then we operate as banquet space. So we've taken a very conservative approach. We think the appropriate approach since March of a year ago, and we've done everything we can to maintain social distancing, to sanitize, we sanitize with state-of-the-art approved uh, chemicals, if you will. We do that multiple times a day. And on top of that, we're a masked environment. So our, our, our staff and guests are welcome to take their masks off when they're eating or drinking, then they go back on again. And as I said, that's important to us because it helps protect our staff and performers. As we move along and we uh, recombine spaces again, of course, we'll move with the regulations and what makes common sense. But for right now, uh, we think we're doing everything we can and we have been very fortunate to the best of our knowledge. We have been able to maintain our programming and still provide good levels of safety. And so here we are in the lobby. You can see that we um, are able to allow all of our diners to uh, enjoy their food and beverage operations here in the lobby. And uh, so tell us a little bit about how, how does that work when people do arrive? Do they just come in and sit down? Obviously, if they sit here and go into the theater for the performance, how does that work out? Sure, I'd be happy to. And contrary to what maybe you're seeing uh, here and there on the news, uh, our patrons have been have been wonderful uh, by and large. Uh, people have been willing to to come. We require a mask. We do a temp check at the door. We explain uh, our protocols as far as masking and and restroom activity with masks and all of those sorts of things. And and it's really easy. It's common sense. And frankly, it works very very well. The banquet space is a little bit different depending on what the event is, the number of people, private event, whatever, the, the, our procedures for eating in there may be a little bit different, but again, we've taken a conservative approach, and I can tell you, um, you're about as, uh, gonna be as comfortable, and I think the experience is enjoyable, but yet safe, so that's where we are. Well, you can see that we still have uh, notices, signs all over the place uh, recommending the social distancing. We have hand sanitizing stations throughout the building for those that would like uh, to help have extra um, safety measures in place. So um, I think we've done a really good job and People I appreciate it. People have been very done. appreciative. Yeah. I mean, honestly, um, we have been thanked many, many, many times for 
uh, taking the approach that we have. So thank you, one and all. Yeah, and so a reminder for everybody that is attending the theater, please remember to bring a mask because when you do come to the performances in either the Encore Room, which is our next production of Nonsense, or if you're in our main room, masks are required in those spaces as David illustrated because we have certain individuals that are still very prone to potentially uh, contracting any sort of a virus. So we encourage you to still follow our rules, the ABT rules, ours that you do wear a mask except when you are dining or enjoying a beverage here in our lobby. Or out on your outdoor patio. Yeah, on the outdoor patio, which is gorgeous this time of year. Yeah. Uh, give it us a few months and it might not be so great. <laughs> but thank you all again for tuning in to Coffee with Kyle. And my guest here today is our facility manager, David Pearson. Uh, please check out um, all of our information on our website at azbroadway.org, as well as our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to get more information on all the things that are going on and follow us on Facebook. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time. And.